I remember how it started. I was 13. I liked football, movies, and, oh yes, bananas. I guess mother often wondered what would ever become of me. I didn't know myself, but it didn't worry me. Today was Saturday and I was on my own. Sometimes things I liked did become a problem, but there was always a way out. Life was especially on Saturday. There was always something to stick my nose into. Even when my nose wasn't appreciated, I was always looking for excitement. That Saturday, I didn't have to look. It just happened. It was Mrs. Parker who lived down the street from us, and she was hurt bad. Someone must have called Father Paul right away. He was a Franciscan from St. Joseph's, just a few blocks down the street. He seemed to know exactly what to do. It was the first time I had ever seen a priest give the last sacraments. Mrs. Parker calmed right down and started to say an act of contrition. I couldn't get over how Mrs. Parker had quieted down when Father Paul came. I talked it over with him on the way home. Well, how'd you get here so fast, Father? Well, I just picked up my habit and ran. I can still run, you know, when I have to. Get a lot of calls like this one? Yes, we get quite a few. You see, we have an emergency hospital right here in our parish, and we get quite a few calls. Most of them come late at night. Gee, isn't that pretty tough, just getting up and rushing out like that? Well, we go when people need us. I better get back to the rectory. I want to call that woman's husband. Okay, goodbye, Father. A couple of days later, I went to the friary. I thought I'd sort of have a talk with Father Paul. I wasn't sure what I was going to say to him. In fact, I'd almost decided to put it off. But I'd into him. He was taking a lawn cedar over to the football field and he asked me if I wanted to give him a hand. I'd have done almost anything to get a ride in that Jeep. Father Paul told me it wasn't really his Jeep. It was for some Franciscan missionaries in the Philippines. Meanwhile, he was just keeping it from getting rusty. I got what he meant. It was swell being with Father Paul. He made even work seem like fun. Father, what's it like to be a priest? Well, that's a pretty big question, Joe. Why, have you been thinking about it? <laughs> Who, me? Oh, no. No, I was just wondering. Wouldn't do for me. I'm not the type. Well, what type do you think it takes? Oh, they have to be awfully good. And, well, they wouldn't ever get in trouble like I do. <laughs> You're a pretty rugged character, you are. Everybody gets into trouble once in a while. Nobody's perfect. Well, they have to be awfully smart, so that lets me out. If that were the case, it would let me out, too. Look, Joe, just between you and me, I didn't graduate with any flying colors. Oh, it's kind of hard at first, but, you know, you kind of get to like it. But how do you know that you... Well, that... that Did you have a vocation? Well, you think about it. You pray a lot. And if it's right for you to try, you'll know it. Hmm. Well... Anyway, I'm just not the type. <laughs> no, I guess you're not. All right. 
with cheer. Father Paul went over to say hello to the coach, and he almost got caught in the middle of things, but he knew how to take care of himself. He sure could get around with that robe on, even playing football. Boys look pretty good, don't they? Sure do. Father, how can a guy be sure if being a priest is for him or not? Look, Joe, in the spring, I'm sending some of the kids up to the seminary for open house just to look around. Would you like to go? Uh, no thanks, Father. I guess not. Well, if you happen to change your mind, just let me know. I said no, and I thought I meant it. But it's a funny thing. When that bus got to St. Anthony's Seminary, I was on it. I wasn't sold, you understand, but it wouldn't hurt to give the place the old once over. At least I'd get it off my mind. The seminary fellows were out to meet us. The older students split us up in bunches. I met Steve. I liked him right away. We were staying overnight, so we took our stuff up to the dormitory. The first thing Frank did was get out his camera. The rest of us were just getting settled when he made a discovery. We swung into action fast. Well, most of us did. I forgot to tell you about a character we had along, Pep McGinnis. He wasn't the athletic type. He didn't believe much in speed. Or in cold water, either. It was easy to get acquainted with the seminarians. There was George Olson from San Francisco. Chuckerson was from Los Angeles. They had to put him under to keep him from talking about it. And Bill Donnelly from Phoenix, third year, great athlete. Suddenly, Dave spotted something. It was too good to pass by. Wake up, thou sleeping beauty. Wow. I never thought the seminary would have anything like this. It was fun. Whoops. What happened? I should have known there was only one thing that could empty a pool that fast. Chow. Pep McGinnis wasn't late for this. He'd have to learn to keep his mind on his prayers, though. Well, I couldn't blame him. The food looked good, and there was a lot of it. Pep found out his corner was last for food. He never made that horrible mistake again. The chapel. This seemed like a place you could really pray in. I'd never seen such a beautiful main altar. One of the side altars was a mosaic of St. Anthony. I had always prayed to him when I lost anything, but I never knew he had worked side by side with St. Francis of Assisi, who started the Franciscans. There was a great love of our Blessed Mother at St. Anthony's Seminary. 
You could feel it everywhere. Steve told us that the boys themselves had built this shrine. Steve showed us his desk in study hall. We could see that a lot of work was done here. We could tell from the cheering that the baseball game had started and we didn't want to miss it. Everybody took off on the double. Except Pep McGinnis. He had other plans. On the way to the field, we had to stop long enough to see this. They were building floats for a big day they had every year. It was like a combination of Rose Parade and a track meet with a picnic thrown in. But we had to get to the game. The whole school was divided into teams, the Vikings, the Lancers, and the Titans. Today was a crucial game between the Titans and the Vikings. I found out everybody was interested in sports, at least in one way or another. The day was gone before I knew it. That night in bed, I tried to add up what I had seen. It was a lot of fun. But somehow I knew it would take a man to make the grade. The next day went by like a dream. Before I knew it, it was time to leave. Good old Steve, he was a great guy. I felt that I'd found something here I didn't want to lose. Next Sunday, I had just finished serving the 8 o'clock mass for Father Paul back at St. Joseph's. Father? Yes, Joe? I think I'd like to try the seminary. Oh? You must have had a pretty good time up there. No, it's... Well, it's, it's not just that, Father. Well, what is it then, Joe? Well, I... I'd like to do God's work. I'd like to do what the priest does. Those are pretty good reasons. But well, how can I be sure that I've got what it takes? Well, I'd hate to go and then fail. Well, don't let that stop you. It's better to try and fail and not try at all. God will love you for having the courage to at least try. Well, yeah, I, well, I never thought of it that way. Of course. Joe, let me see your hands. Hey, they're pretty rugged looking hands, you know. Those hands could swing a bat for the New York Yankees or the Giants or Dodgers. Or well, they could work the controls of a jet plane. They might even handle a surgeon's scalpel. But you want to know something, Joe? These hands could do the most wonderful work of all. They could touch God. They could hold God up for the whole world to see. That's what I want, Father. Are you sure, Joe? Have you talked to your folks about it? No, I haven't. Well, you know, you're going to have to get their consent before you can go. Why don't you talk to Mom and Dad and see how they feel about it, see if it's okay with them. Okay, Father. You'll have to give up a lot, Joe. But you have to give up a lot for anything that's, that's really worthwhile. I won't miss it, Father. Good. Well, go to it. You talk to Mom and Dad, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, huh? Thank you, Father. God bless you, son.
As Father Paul had just said, there were things I'd have to give up. I tried to think of a way to tell Mom and Dad what was on my mind. Joe, you're starting to wear out the carpet again. What's the matter, dear? Can't you find anything to do? Mom, Dad, I'd like to go to the seminary. I want to be a priest. Mother, did you know anything about this? No, not really. Are you serious, Joe? Yes, Dad, I am. What do you think, Mother? I prayed for this for one of my sons. But I never dared hope. Sit down, Joe. Now, you're sure you know what you're doing? Yes, Dad, I've thought a lot about it. Well, what do you do first? Well, first I have to go to the seminary and study. How long does it take to become a priest? Oh, about 13 years, Dad. 13 years? Why so long? You have to know an awful lot to become a priest. Ah, 13 years before you even begin to work. So when September rolled around, the folks drove me up to St. Anthony's. Father Hillary showed them around the seminary. Dad had a question to ask. 13 years? Isn't there anything we can do to speed it up? <laughs> well, he's got an awful lot to learn. I thought saying goodbye would be harder, but Mom and Dad were very good about it. Somehow, it made me feel even more like doing my best. Now it was the real thing. I began to realize as time went on that everything I had to do was training me for the man-sized job of being a priest. Whether it was in history class, singing in the choir, or on the shovel brigade. The whole program was teaching me to live and work with other fellows. Even fun taught us to pull together, and we developed a feeling of belonging more than just going to the same school. days at the beach were a real treat. All boys loved the water. Well, almost all. Yes, those times at the beach were something to remember. And there was always a happy note to end the day. Santa Barbara had mountains, too. And on holidays, we had a chance to explore them. Sometimes we had to learn about the outdoors the hard way. Sports, you name it, and we played it. Whether it was having a good time, or working, or praying, there was something different about the Franciscan spirit. It joined us together in one big family. I felt close to the most tremendous thing in the world.
someday this could be me. This could be me. Before I knew it, the six years at junior seminary had passed and it was time for the novitiate at Mission San Miguel. I took off my coat and threw it aside as a sign I wouldn't need things like that anymore. I was starting a new life. They gave me the brown robe and the cord and the sandals. I was a Franciscan and it felt good. I was glad for all the others who had made it, including Pep McGinnis. We were welcomed into a wonderful new family. And I felt closer than ever to my own family. Mother and father were as excited and happy as I was, even if dad was puzzled what the three knots in my cord were for, and still a little worried about when I was going to get to work. Mother was more interested in my sandals. Those sandals carried me on the path and in the spirit of Father Sarah and the early Mission Padres. Mission San Luis Rey for our college days. On to Mission Santa Barbara. The days flew by faster now. The goal was within our reach. Suddenly, this was the day. and dad's day too. I told God that I knew I was not worthy to stand before him. I didn't deserve to be here being made a priest. It was too big a job for me or for any man. But since God had called me to it, I knew his grace would see me through would do the best I could and leave the rest to him. Going therefore, teach all nations, Christ was commanding me as I felt the hands of the bishop on my head. My brother priests in the order, through the firm touch of their hands on my head, told me that they wanted to share with me all the strength and joy that they had found in their life as Franciscan priests. Father Noel, famous authority on Fray Junipero Serra. Father Dominic, missionary to the Indians before I was born. Father Virgil, in charge of Mission Santa Barbara. Father Silvano, beloved teacher for 32 years. Father Maynard, learned historian of the California missions. Father Basil, pastor and ex-army chaplain. Father Stanislaus, brilliant young theologian. Now their strength was mine. Yes, now I was a priest. 
I had the full power of the priesthood, and I could do all the wonderful work of bringing God to men. To take away sin. To comfort the sick. To help in faraway missions. To lead the young. To build for God. To counsel college students. To bless young hearts starting a new life. These were my hands, made special for the work of God and bound to his service. We were men of God now. Ready to go out into the world and bring his blessing with us. for excitement on a Saturday morning long ago. To this, the power of the priesthood has been a long road. But it's all been worthwhile. If I had it to do over again, I'd do the same thing. And now the moment that no priest ever forgets, his first blessing to his father and mother. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentis Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Now, son? Yes, Dad. After 13 years, now I can go to work. This has been the story of a boy who found out God wanted him to be a Franciscan priest. God is calling other boys to their great life. Perhaps he's calling you. If you want to know more about the Franciscan priesthood, write to St. Anthony Seminary, Santa Barbara, California. If you live in the Northwest states, write to the new St. Francis Seminary, Troutdale, Oregon.